Hi, I'm Tim. This is Alex, first time brewer, and today we're brewing Brew Dog's Hazy Jane. So Hazy Jane is Brew Dog's one of Brew Dog's flagship beers, a New England style IPA at five percent. And one of your favourites? One of my favourites, yeah. I like to embrace the opaque. You do. <laughs> that is their actual tagline. Well done. I like it. I like it. <coughs> uh, yeah. So the purpose of this video is to put a complete beginner. You, you've never brewed, right? Never. Promise. Never. Promise. No, no fingers crossed. No, I haven't got. No clue what's that. So I'm going to leave Alex, aka the handsome one on camera, to, uh, to to demonstrate while I bark orders at him from behind the scenes. That's the idea anyway. Nothing changes. What we have um, is a kit here. This is a kit sold by Brewbro Shop. Um, obviously you don't need to buy your equipment on there, but you know, it'd be lovely if you did. Um, so that kit was £12, which works out at £1.36 a pint, which isn't too bad. So, so yeah, we have the kit, so we're going to work from that. That's got instructions, it's got all the ingredients that we need to, uh, to do the brew. Um, Alex, let's see what we've got in terms of equipment. We have an airlock. We obviously have the bucket itself, which we're getting everything out of. That's our fermenter. Uh, we've got some sterilizer, and that's very important. That's only two, three pounds, but you, you must get some, some, some decent sanitizer slash sterilizer. We've got a siphon. We've got a stopper for the keg. We have a thermometer. It doesn't matter if you have a digital thermometer or an old school analog thermometer. We have a mashing net. Is that, is that it? That's it. And then of course we have the keg as well. But uh, that's it. Let's, um, let's dive in and get brewing. So what's the temperature reading? The temperature reading is, oh, it's still going up. Hang on, 20.5. And what are we aiming for? What's our sprite water temperature on our instructions? Oh, um, I would say 73 degrees. 73, so we've got a fair way to go. It's quite cold today, 4 degrees outside. So what we're going to do when it's time to start mashing, no sniggering at the back, is uh, what we're going to do is take the pot off the heat altogether and just put it on the side there. Once we're at temperature, and then we're going to put the grain bag in. And then it's a process of putting your pot on and off the heat. Right, so there we go, we're at 73 degrees, now it's time to unleash the malt. Obviously we have a bag there, so the malt has been, uh, it's been pre-prepared. Is it pre-measured? So the whole thing has been pre-measured. Every single one in. Yep, all the way in. And savour that smell. You want to spend about two, three minutes stirring just to make sure that there's no clumps of, sort of dough balls in there. We call them dough balls, not dough balls. I think Brew Bro 2 might pop out at some point. It'd be nice to see him. No, it wouldn't. When he gets here, the Brew Bro, the brew day automatically increases threefold. <laughs> He's the king of procrastination and the king of hair loss. So we're approaching the sparge. What do you know about the sparge? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Oh god, here he is. Hang on a second. The lightly lad. There he is. What are you doing now? We're doing Hazy Jane. Oh wow, nice. Alex's first brew. So the sharper viewers amongst you may have spotted that we now have an urn. Good old urn. Uh, the reason we have an urn is, well it's quite simple really. We've only got one hob in our kitchen. So the urn has our sparge water, which according to our recipe guidelines is three and a half, three and a half litres at 78 degrees C. 77. 77 degrees C. Uh, lift it out. Lift it out. And you'll see from stage right, I'm going to introduce this. Now this is a hat, and you don't absolutely need it. Can you see the haziness already? I was in a haze. But do you know what we call this now, by the way, this liquid? I'm going to go wort. Correct. Hey. Finally, you nail it. There you go. I'm just going to put that underneath it. That will do. That will do nicely. Um, so now what you're going to do is, with your three and a half litres of water, no, you can leave it there. Okay. We're basically going to rinse the grains. Oh. So rinse the last of the sugars from those lovely grains. We have the benefit here of a pot that's got volume markings on Now those pots, it was given to me by a caterer, but they're actually very expensive. So what you can do, you can get some kind of plastic implement, like I've got this mash paddle here, but any length of wood or plastic or so on, and then literally just with a measuring jug, put, put the water in the, uh, the pot, and then to measure where four litres is, five, five and a half, six, whatever you need for your recipe. Just mark it on there with marker pen. And then you've got a nice measuring dipstick. The stove is set up to the max temp. We're just trying to get a good boil going. Nice rolling boil, nothing too, uh, 
Nothing too outrageous. Right, Alex. Hello. You know this part of the process, don't you? No. The hops. Oh yeah. So this one. It's very simple. This this brew only one pack of hops in the boil. Five grams of chinook, five grams of amarillo, five grams of simple. And there's been a debate about chinook versus chinook. Thoughts in the comments. Perfect. You see them all bubbling up there. Right, you grab a spoon, give it a bit of a work it around a bit. Just saying, these stove top brews are great. No stress. Get your Battenberg cake, get a brew one. Right then, sports fans, that's the, uh, that's the end of the boil. So we can move this on, onto there. So we're creating an ice bath for the pot of work to sit in, just to get it down to, uh, get it down to about 22 degrees so we can pitch our yeast. Next one. Ed's still here, let's ask him. Ed. Why is it a good idea to cool, um, cool your work down as quick as possible? Uh, so that you don't introduce any infections, because you want to get the yeast in there as quickly as possible so it can do its job. Yep. What he said. <laughs> good for surround it. Yeah, I'll just grab you another bag. <clears throat> Incoming. <laughs> okay, so that's going to cool over probably 15 minutes or so. At this point, we need to start being really uh, super hot and sanitizing everything. Everything now that comes into contact with the beer, now it's starting to cool. It's got to make sure there's no bacteria on it that's going to infect our beer because that's the whole thing over that happens. So yeah, we're, we're, we're making up a, a sanitizing solution here. And once we've done that, we can dip anything in there. So the spoon, if, we're going to, if it's going to come into contact with the wort, it needs to be, it needs to be uh, sanitized in there first. What we're going to do in a minute is use the spoon to create a nice whirlpool in there just to get it whipping around the cold mm -hmm. uh, and just, 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 to, just try and encourage it to cool as quick as possible. That's it. And now all you need to do is pour your beer, or no, sorry, wort. It's still a wort at this point. <laughs> what we've got to do now is pour your wort just straight into the bucket. I'll go around this way. So, just the job. I right, stop about two inches shy of the lid, which is the five litre mark. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Keep them going, keep them going. That's it, perfect. Just the job. All we've got to do now is grab our yeast packet. So this is Safael Dried Yeast US05. The Hazygen actually uses Y yeast, which is a liquid yeast. yeast. Y yeast 1056, but for the purposes of just simplicity, we're not, we're not using that in the dry juice. Okay, so now it's lid on. So what we're going to do, you're going to use your, uh, you're going to shake it around now. Oh, okay. To aerate it. It needs to be shaken for about a minute. Ooh. Well done. Thanks. And then the last moment. There you go, done. That's it. That's it. So now this is just going to go in the air and cover for a couple of weeks. 24 hours later. One week later. Two, six days later. So Alexander is back, hey. <laughs> and it's time to <coughs> siphon the beer into the keg for carbonation and conditioning. So what, what was the main takeaway point from the brew day? Something very important that you always must do. Uh, sanitise. Correct. Sanitise, that's what we're going to start with. So we've got about 16 litres of water in there. Obviously the plastic uh, bucket is acting as your basin. So if you can grab your siphon out of the box. Oh yeah, there you go. So you can see it coming out the end in there. That's what we want. So you now know the sanitizers travel all the way through that siphon. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you fill the um, if you fill the keg with some sanitizer, well, I say fill it, about half fill it. You 
you can just put it straight in the keg, but I like to just mix it with a little bit of hot water. So you wanted to give that a good mix around. Give that a good go with the spoon. Use no, 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 don't use the spoon. That's not sanitised. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's gone. Just to reiterate, the jug is sanitised and the dextrose is now just sugar water, yes? Yeah. Cool, so now you can pour that inside your keg. Just the jug. So that is going to give the yeast some more sugar to feed on. And we're going to put the stopper in the keg in a minute. And because it, the yeast eating that sugar is going to produce CO2, rather than being released out of it like it did through fermentation, the CO2 came out obviously of this uh, airlock. It can't go out of the keg, so it carbonates the beer instead. Good old yeast. How's that looking? Yeah, looking good. At the bottom of this, there'll be a centimetre to an inch of what we call trub, or some call trube, which is basically um, yeast, hot matter. And now you've got your siphon, let's, uh, let's whip that out. Now the first thing you need to do is empty it. So now you're just paying attention to the level inside the bucket here. And as I said, you just want to move that filter down as the as the beer flows. You see, we've already taken out what looks like about half a litre. So it comes into contact with the uh, twerp, whatever it's called. Twerp? <laughs> You're the twerp. <laughs> the wort? Yeah. No, 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 there's stuff at the bottom, you said. Oh, the trub. Trub, there True you go. trub, call it what you will. So you can now whip the siphon out. Yeah, so as you can see, we don't want that stuff in the bottom. So, and put that in nice and firmly. So there we have it. So this is now going to sit in the airing cupboard at 20 degrees and uh, for two weeks. And then we give it a taste test. Can't wait. See you guys there. Two weeks later. That's what we want. Oh, hey, that's what we want. Perfect. So that means there will be some carbonation. Oh yeah. Oh, that's looking good. That looks really good. I think it's darker than the original. I think so. Have us a slightly. Okay. <clears throat> we'll find out then. We'll need to see the original again. I'm assuming there's, there's a can there, we're going to pour that in a minute. There <laughs> you go. Cheers, Chief. Lovely head on that. That's good to know. Yeah. There's natural carbonation. Yeah, great. Dextrose has done its job. Uh, oh, that smells great. It does smell it good. It really good, yeah. I mean, it's going to, isn't it? With Simcoe, Mosaic, Citra. Yeah. Dry hop. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Alex. Well done. Nice. Your health. Well done. Good effort. Well done. Yeah, so far, so good. So, what are you thinking? Nice aroma. Oh, he's gone straight in. You absolutely need <laughs> it. What do you think? I really like it. Familiar aroma? It's a, definitely a familiar aroma. I was drinking some hazy last night. <laughs> yeah. A bit of homework. Yeah. <laughs> Tropical fruit, stone fruit, deal. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Very nice. You going in? I know, but he's already caught half of this. It's a nice, <laughs> a nice amount of haze there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, lo lovely colour. It is. I, yeah. I think it's darker. It is darker. Yeah. I'm sure of that. That's just the amount of haziness. <laughs> I feel like it's slightly bitterer. Yeah, I, I like that. Look at that difference in, in colour. Mm. Just so you know, I mean, you can tell by the colour anyway, but the uh, ours is in the, uh, the black Brew Bros logo, the original's in the white Brew Bros logo. I think brew dog are inconsistent when they use extra pale and when they just use pale. Okay. It's quite annoying. And we, I've come across on this before with the uh, urban fog that we did. You remember? It was, it was darker than the original. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? Any difference? Well, you reckon you're getting more aroma? I, I reckon you get more aroma from yours. Wow. Well, this is another realisation where I've spent loads of money on all this gear and reverse osmosis systems and you can just you can come up with something like that using just tap water on their stove top yeah. yeah have you tasted the breeder yeah and yeah. um i'm not saying this because it's just mine prefer I, I, I prefer hey. yeah. really yeah yeah packs more of a flavor straight up yeah it does it actually does it bs you know what and i know this is a this is going to be a contentious point i find a lot of brew dog beers particularly their commercial beers are all bang on the aroma but there's no taste. <laughs> Sorry. I know where you're coming from. That's what I found in the tap room. You know, I've, I've been yeah. in the Breedog tap room in Bournemouth a few times recently. Yeah. I found exactly that there. Yeah. I find them quite bland taste-wise. Right. To perfect this, I think we just need to add, to make just make a straight switch out, pale for extra pale, yeah. low colour malt, and then, and then it's, it's, it's gonna look yeah, like this. Yeah. When are you coming back to do that one then? <laughs> <laughs> Next week? <laughs> Is it the kind of thing you think you'd do again? Or will you just go down to the supermarket and buy some? 
No, I'll do it again. Bear in mind it's about a quid a pint. It works yeah. out at. We've got to start scaling up now. Yeah, <laughs> scale up. Yeah, but it's a space thing, isn't it? I mean, stovetop's great, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, it's, it's, it's been a great, it's been a great, great experience. Good. Hmm. So here we go. We hope you got something out of this video. Uh, we have proven that even the biggest dunce in Dorset can make a decent beer on a stovetop for the first time with the right direction. <laughs> I hope you brew this beer yourselves. Keep an eye on the channel. Pound that like button and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon.